Today we welcome in the expert, well, she's inbound marketing evangelist at HubSpot. She's also founder of 140 and co-author of Twitter for Dummies. We welcome in Laura Fitton. You guys know her as Pistachio on Twitter. And I know her as the woman that who I last saw was carrying around a unicorn. So, Laura, welcome back into the show. How are you? Hey, I'm great. Last time we talked, not only did you have a unicorn, but we were talking about some of the things that you're working on now at HubSpot. So maybe give us a little taste of what's been happening now that Absolutely. 140 is part of the HubSpot universe. Absolutely, yeah. So we were running what had started as Twitter's app store and kind of ended up being the go-to place for all your social media marketing tools in 140. And HubSpot saw the value in that, picked it up. And my new gig is fantastic. I'm an evangelist. But unlike many companies who hire someone to evangelize their software and tell everybody we are the greatest, our software is the greatest, what HubSpot wants me most to evangelize is just the idea of inbound marketing, period. This idea that marketing doesn't have to suck for consumers anymore. It doesn't have to be expensive and inefficient for brands anymore. We can put useful content out there because content marketing is really only the first step of inbound marketing. And then as people come to our site, we can watch how that works, who comes back, what do they look for, and understand our, our leads as they develop. Incredibly valuable for businesses who are, of course, struggling in this economy. Right now. So, Laura, you know, while we have, you know, the, the last thing you and I were talking about while we were at Inbound Marketing Summit, I and kind of going back to that again, you and I were really discussing, you know, all right, how do we kind of attack this monster going forward? Yeah. Because, I mean, everybody's saying there's so much data coming in. Kind of reiterate that for me right now. I know, you know, we had a great conversation there, but kind of go back into that right now. How do we attack this monster of all this content, all this data especially? Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely better, better and better tools are evolving that can help you understand the data. Um, the HubSpot acquisition of Performable this summer was huge on that because it gives people a chance to really granularly test how their pages are performing and where people are going on the page and, and really do a complete life, cy life cycle marketing on the person, really understand, you know, are they coming back, what are they doing next? Um, and then in the kind of broader world of third-party apps, very exciting to see apps that finally extract some signal and meaning out of the data. I know Data Miner is a great example of that. It's the one that, um, you know, it was basically watching Twitter when Osama was killed. And after 19 tweets, it put out a warning to its financial network customers, because it's all financial services, that it was probable, possible, that Osama had been killed. And they were able to respond 18 minutes ahead of the news cycle, which in the financial services industry is like a year. I mean, it's just incredible what signals. We're starting to see um, health information, epidemic information based on what people are seeing in the real time because we finally have the tools that can grind it down and pull out some useful signals. That'll be tremendously important for brands as they understand how their brand is being considered all over the globe it's just quantum years ahead of what the focus group used to be able to do. Those groups are very expensive. They generate results that are kind of iffy because people aren't that great point blank being asked about things. Um, instead, we have this, this megalithic giant world of natural remarks human beings are making about ordinary problems, ordinary products, and their everyday lives. So There's a tremendous amount of market data there. So, so I think we all agree that data is maybe the end game for a lot of social. Mm -hmm. It's not only a great way to interact, and it's natural, obviously. People want our social, they want to be interacting on these channels. I think just like online, you know, a lot of early e-commerce, people thought it was all about convenience. It was about lowering the cost of sale. But it turns out that it was also about understanding the types of behavior and what people liked and be able to open up a line of communication. I think that's totally the case for social as well. I was going to say, I think mobile is taking another step further, what we were just talking about last week as well. I mean, the ability to understand what people are doing and what they like and what they're talking about in their words and then mixing in mobile, sort of where they're doing that, when they're mm -hmm. doing that, blending that all together, I think that's incredibly important and powerful for marketers. Certainly, we want to be very transparent the way that we share that with customers so they know that that's being um, you know, used in that way. But I think customers are very savvy. If there's something in it for them, they're happy to share that information.